Welcome to another edition of Light On. And if you're new to my channel, welcome. I'm Sheila, and today we are going to talk about something really interesting. There has been a post which has been floating around which said that we have got two parents, four grandparents, eight great grandparents, and if we count back to about 12 generations, 4,048 people were involved in creating us. It made me think. If we have all the positive qualities of those 4,000 people, what about the negatives in this DNA pool? And how does it affect us all? And to answer these questions, today I have a very special guest. I have someone who's a perfect mix of a medical doctor in the field of psychodynamic psychotherapy and a transpersonal regression therapist. And if you're like me wondering what a transpersonal regression therapist is, in just a minute, we will ask him. Dr. Gaurav Deka extensively uses holistic methodologies like regression therapy, inner child regression, inner child integration, hypnotherapy, family constellation, EFT, and a series of other metaphysical tools for his practice. Let's welcome Dr. Gaurav Deka. Gaurav, glad to have you here. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you, Sheila. Thank you so much for inviting me to this uh show and this interview and you are doing an incredibly good job uh, so I'm, I'm really glad to be here thank you so Gaurav before we get into the show could you just tell us a little more about yourself what is okay. an interpersonal regression therapist okay I started my journey with um, being a medical doctor myself uh, I went ahead and did my medicine MBBS and then uh, after that I found that uh, there was a different calling altogether. So I went ahead and I thought that the field of psychology is going to interest me. So um, pursuing a career in uh, psychodynamic psychotherapy was something that I looked forward to. Uh, but then even after doing that, I felt that, okay, the traditional way of working with people, seeing them over sessions of talk therapy, um, sitting chair to chair in front and allowing them to discuss their issues and having a very rational analytical standpoint about it. Uh, somehow it didn't again work for me. So again, I had to jump from there. And then finally I found uh, regression therapy and in regression therapy, I truly found my light because I was, um, I was someone who, uh, himself went through the therapeutic format as in I went through the therapy myself and realized that it had uh, answers to a lot of questions that I had about my own life. Given that uh, before that I myself was suffering from depression and uh, obsessive compulsive disorder. And I found that they could actually go away in a matter of few days. My faith in the work and in the subject grew, even though when you come from a space where you have to uh, attend clinics, uh, see dead bodies and dissect cadavers every single day, you cannot submit yourself to that kind of process. But then um, I went ahead and then um, I explored it and understood that well, human problems, um, have roots way beyond human individuality. Uh, for example, if a person is 35 years old or 40 years old, and if they are facing an issue, let us say with their wife or with their health or with their money, or let us say even with existential dilemma, the core of that problem will not be at the age of 35 or at the age of 40, which is the current age. The core of that problem takes us back to either being a child in the childhood of that person, or um, in some cases, it may even take back to the time of that person in their mother's womb. We call it the antenatal or prenatal period. It even has the ability to um, take the person back before the person was born. And that is, um, how do you call it? Uh, an interspace, uh, a bizarre kind of space, which is beyond the realm of um, understanding or believing. 
but we do explore it in regression therapy because the root of the problem may even be in that phase before the person was born. And sometime back, further and further and further, there is a possibility that we may land up in a different lifetime altogether, which we call as past life regression therapy. So I know that past life regression therapy is quite popular in uh, today's time and almost all people know about it. But what people do not know is uh, past life regression therapy is a segment of regression therapy in totality. Most regressions lead to childhood. And that is where my core area is. And uh, another area where I work beyond childhood uh, exploration is the exploration of um, the stories, events, attitudes and traumas of our mother and father and also of our ancestors. So it is intermixed, I would say. There is a relationship between childhood trauma and traumas of our ancestors or our mother and father. That's the area where I work. So because the work uh, also involves exploring childhood along with different people in the family matrix, we call it a systemic work, meaning I work with the childhood as well as with the whole system, with the whole family. So that's what is the work I do today. Wow. So what you're saying is that the trauma that we have today or any issue that we have in our life today may not be just us. Is that what you're saying? Absolutely. Um, it is us, but it may not begin with us. Okay. It may begin elsewhere. For example, um, if let us say a child feels traumatized and lost and unconfident, uh, as well as away from its parents, let us say away from its father, the child will grow up to be this person who um, wouldn't hold it in their conscious realm, but will continue to be unconfident, will perhaps find it difficulty to seek support from people because while they were children, the support was not available. Probably it would be difficult for them to even ask for love or be stable in a relationship because there was always a sense of detachment when they grew up from their parent or from their father, or let us say from their mother. Now it is possible that this is not where the difficulty began. The difficulty must have began um, in the life of the mother or in the life of the father. It is possible that they themselves were away from their parents. Let us consider a grandfather who went to war and lost um, his comrades, lost his friends. In what kind of state is he going to return home? Well, he will return home lost. He will return home in a state of grief, knowing that I lost my friends, but now I must return. And at the same time, I have to be there for my family, but I can't be there because my mind is there where the loss happened. So automatically there is an energy of disconnection and detachment with the family. So when the child keeps on looking forward to the father's love, um, the child also is unable to have that love because father is away. He is present, but he's also not present. Now this child grows up with that sense of detachment and disconnection and becomes a father to the next child. So definitely that trauma of the grandfather who faced this disconnection and the loss and grief is traveling in a way which is mysterious, secretive, but finds space in the unconfidence, in the grief, in the detachment, in the inability to find love of this individual in the um, second generation. So Gaurav, I also meet a lot of people who, who did not grow up with their parents. They have either were left with their grandparents hmm. and their grandparents brought them up hmm. or um, the, one of the parents died and, you know, yeah. they had to go and live with their grandparents. What happens to kids like this where they don't really uh, uh, find a father? There is a male figure, but it's not really a father figure. So sometimes there is also a disconnection from the grandparents because the grandparents are looking after the grandchildren like a duty. Hmm. Hmm. So does something happen to kids like these also people who grow up like this in such families 
concerning this specific example, uh, there are various dynamics here. The first dynamics is the parents are not present. Now, the kind of work that I do, um, the name specifically is called system work or family constellations. Again, what is a, a constellation? A constellation is an arrangement. It's a, it's, it's a configuration of things, right? So here we try to configure and arrange family and see that, okay, what is amiss or what is not functional in this family that is leading to this problem? In this case, what will happen is the child internally at a soul level feels away from the parents because the parents are not there. So the child always will carry that sense of loss of not having the parents. That's the first dynamic that this grief cannot be um, mended. The second layer is because they are also living with their grandparents, their perception of who a parent is and how a parent loves a child will also be altered. Because as much as you may live with your grandparents and they will love you definitely, but at the same time, your perception of what a parent is and how to receive the love of a parent is altered. It is difficult for them to receive love fully. And difficulty in receiving love fully leads to difficulty in receiving life fully. So they will not be able to receive the fullness, wholeness, and the total energy of life fully. But yes, they will look up to their grandparents. Now, let us say that the grandparents love the child, but loves the child from a sense of duty. The child is going to feel that. The enormous amount of feeling that I am a liability, I am a burden, and I must not exist. Because if I exist, my grandparents suffer. Is an internal thought, is an internal feeling that will reside in the child's soul, even if the child is, let us say, aggressive, throws things around, naughty, runs around, all those qualities are seen. However, what I'm talking about is a unconscious inner thought that every child in this scenario is going to carry. Now, if I am a burden and if I do not, must not exist, and if I am a liability to my grandparents, who must I become now? What must I do? So there is a natural tendency for the child to then also follow the parents. By following, I mean here that the child will make a movement, an energetic movement towards those parents who have died. And therefore, because of its loyalty, it will attract things in its life that will lead it to that movement. For example, it can fall ill. So we also see um, terminal illness, be it autoimmune disease, be it cancer. They may also be prone to, let us say, severe accidents, accident after accident. They may have suicidal tendency. They may fall into depression. There could be addiction involved where a destructive path is chosen, not because I want to destroy everything, but because I want to follow my parents. So it is one of the dynamics that is a possibility in such a scenario. I had um, seen a post of yours, Gaurav, where you had um, actually, where you had specifically spoken about uh, relationships and relationship with your exes. Hmm. So does that also fall into, would you like to speak about it before, to our viewers? Because it was a very interesting right. post and it was quite an eye opener when I saw that video of yours. Right. So I do speak about what our ex-partners uh, constitute. Why are they required and how do they become important? So many times, not many times, in fact, 100 out of 100 times, the way we deal with our ex-partners is by cutting ourselves off or cutting them off, um, numbing that part of us. Now we have Facebook, we have Instagram, we have WhatsApp, and the easiest option is to block right and when we do that 
um, there is something we bring with us from that relationship, which we don't realize. Even if we have spent one week with a person in a romantic capacity, in a sexual capacity, even if we have spent one month or let us say year, that time is significant because we have believed in the idea of love or the idea of a relationship with that person. And whatever we have experienced in that relationship, we bring it to our current relationship because we cannot discount the fact that that person who we were with is also a part of this system, a part of what we believe about love. In the first place, that's why we went ahead and were with that person. Later, it became acrimonious and let us say abusive, whatever it became. But in the first place, we believed in the fact that there is a possibility of love and our belief in it took us there. Now we carry that energy into our current relationship purely because we believe in it. And then what happens is we also recreate similar situations in our current relationship. A common example is falling in love constantly with a narcissist. You know, one after the other turns out to be a narcissist. Falling in love with someone who is going through addiction. First one is alcohol. Second one could be, let us say, digitally addicted. And the third one is extremely loving, but cannot give up his or her work. Addicted to work. So these patterns exist also because of what we carry from our previous relationship. Now, if in those previous relationship, and I'm talking here of heterosexual relationship. So if in those relationships, let us say a child is born out of that relationship, then what will happen is, um, and, and if the child is surviving, of course, the conception of the child in itself is a huge mark of, that, of the culmination of that relationship. However, if the child uh, is miscarried or if the child is aborted, then again, it is also a mark of the death of that love. Something about that love died and people carry that grief again into their current relationship. So there are several dynamics, but these are the two important dynamics uh, that need to be expressed because they are seen quite ubiquitously. So uh, when you do family constellation, uh, you said in family constellation, what we do is we look at the placement of all the people in the relationships, right? Yeah. So yeah. do we also have to place in uh, our current relationships, people who are there in our current relationship or our exes also? Yes, I, I usually do that. Especially there are times when people are in a loving, satisfying relationship, but they also say that, I don't know, I continue to feel some void. I continue to feel that this is not the right thing for me. It is possible that they have remained in a previous relationship, which is dysfunctional, which could be abusive, which could be too demanding, which makes them hyper responsible for such a long period of time that to take the new relationship in this new light where they are loved and where they can be relaxed is difficult. So then we do have to place them in a constellation, the current as well as the ex. And given by the inner movement of the client, how the client wants to see this new relationship going forward, given by the inner movement of the client, we help the client let go of the previous one gracefully because they haven't been able to give it up gracefully, but at the same point of time, they carry a lot from there, which they don't want to also acknowledge because um, it's not good. It's not a good part of my life. I don't want to carry it, but they invariably do carry it. Uh, Gaurav, I, in my work also, I have seen that the kind of relationships that we attract into our lives are mainly also because of the relationships that we have with our parents, right? Yeah. Uh, and so when you do family constellation, what kind of issues do normally people come to you for? Is it just relationship issues or are there even physical issues or mental issues that they come to you for? 
yeah yeah i have all kinds of issues coming to me and um people have um i don't know if it's a good notion or a bad notion but people feel that because i've worked for years in the medical field also so they feel very comfortable to talk about their physical illnesses as well uh, diseases as well so people come with various kinds of issues um i do get a lot of autoimmune disorders like hashimotos thyroiditis or let us say hirschsprung's disease or even diabetes even cancer uh we do have a lot of physical illnesses as well coming in for a constellation so when we look at these different different constellations um we understand that even though um it is possible that every disease may have a specific emotional counterpart we still cannot generalize it for example we know that okay if we have shoulder pain uh, it is possible that i'm carrying a lot of burden in my life okay if we have uh, lower back pain then it is possible that you know the person's concern is about finances or the person's relationship with their father the primary uh, source of support needs to be explored or it is possible that if someone has a migraine or a headache they are so confused that they are unable to make a decision so they are indecisive so these are a few general notions that we have collected over the years in alternative or you know um integrative sciences where we try to find out specific emotional causes for physical ailments but in the world of constellations i have seen that uh, it is very specific the same illness can have different dynamics for different people for example i recently uh, talked about uh, someone who had uh, dysmenorrhea uh, which is painful menstruation and uh, when we constellated we saw that the mother of this client uh, had lost a child uh, and uh, and then this child was born and then our client was born and that grief remained unexpressed and unaddressed in the system uh, not only by the mother but also by the father why we do that why do we not express or why do we not accept it's because it is painful to accept it it's difficult to accept it so that's why many grief and many losses and many deaths also remain unacknowledged uh, so what happened here in this case is the child the client unconsciously takes that takes the burden of the mother takes the pain of the mother and feels it uh month after month in their own menstrual cycle until we constellated and there was a healing statement which i prompted her to say to her pain that um uh, even if you go i will still love you which means that she is addressing her sister that i know you've gone i love you even though and even if you go away i will still hold you in my heart and i will love you that kind of statement establishes a loving relationship between what is unknown and what is known the pain and the sister and when they are brought together and the system is completed the symptoms relax because the job of the symptom was to tell what was missing in the system how interesting now i love the word constellated that you used could you tell me in this in this family constellation that you do mm-hmm. I, i don't know I, i know you cannot explain the entire process but just so that the viewers can understand what exactly happens here in in a family constellation right when we do constellation or family constellations to be truthful and to be honest uh, there is not only family constellation there are many kinds of constellations anything that is a system uh, can be constellated uh, now what is a system um, a system is anything that has parts to it and different parts have different functions for example a house a house is a bedroom it has a kitchen it has a drawing room the purpose of the drawing room is different from the purpose of the bedroom we cannot sleep in our kitchen because that's not our bedroom right so they are in their own own position and they have their own own functions consider a house where you open the door and you find the kitchen first how would you feel you would feel that oh i have to now pass through it to somewhere else and i don't know where the drawing room is 
So you may feel a bit disoriented, right? So similarly, in a family, every person has their own position and every person has their own roles and responsibility. Similarly, in an university, each department will have its own position. For example, in medical school, anatomy is the department which we encounter in our first year. Pathology is a department we encounter in a second year. How would we feel if we bring pathology in the second year, first year itself? We might feel disoriented because that's not the place, right? Similarly, in the school, every subject has its own importance and period after period, we have different, different subjects. And therefore, similarly in business and in organizations also, there is marketing, there is HR, there is sales, there is administration, and there are different dynamics that occur between these different departments. However, most of my work is concentrated around looking at systems from the family perspective, although I do business constellations as well. Now, in the family perspective, what happens is, uh, let us say, I'll take help of the previous example, which you, um, which you asked previous question. Let us say someone comes with a set of symptoms. They have a bloating stomach. Uh, they have headache and they have muscle fatigue. And maybe they are diagnosed as um, someone who is intolerant to uh, gluten. So there are many ways by which I can address this. <clears throat> One of the ways is, let's say you and I are sitting in the setup and we are physically present, not through Zoom. And there are other, you know, five, six people who are present with us who don't know you, who have no idea who you are. So I will tell them that, okay, you, X, Y, Z, you become Sheila, example. And um, you, A, B, C, you become uh, Sheila's ailment. And I will leave them in an open space while you and I will nicely sit together and we will ob observe what is happening. And then what will happen slowly, slowly, these people who are randomly given these roles, who do not know anything about the actuality of these roles, um, they will start executing, behaving, speaking in a manner which will reflect something about your illness, something about your life, maybe even people from your life. Maybe you will discover that there is something that my father could never speak. He kept it in, inside himself. So I experienced the bloating, you know, he wanted to speak so much about it, but he never had the space. And so he felt indecisive whether to speak or not speak. And hence I have the headache, right? And it may turn out that when we place those people, ultimately one person is reaching out to the other person and the other person is saying that I have a huge secret that I always wanted to say, but I can't say it. And I might seek your help at that moment as a facilitator to ask you that, Sheila, does this make any sense to you? And initially it will not make sense because in your mind, well, how can the disease talk? But slowly, slowly, as I guide you, you will see that, oh, I think it's not my disease. I think it's my father. He always wanted to say these, 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 these things, but he could never speak about these things. Now I can see that he is speaking. So there is an inner realization that happens as a result of watching it in a three-dimensional matrix. So that's the classical, classical format of a family constellation. But there are, of course, many other different formats, many, many different formats. So uh, you are saying I can do it with my, uh, with my body parts also or with my illnesses. I can do a constellation with that also. Yes. And absolutely. what happens... Uh, now, what happens with when you have uh, children who come from, who are adopted? What, what happens, happens when they are adopted? Adopted, okay. Because okay. then your okay. parents are, you don't know who your real parents, who your parents were. It is, again, you know, yeah. there is this debate of nature versus nurture. Sure. So yeah. what happens there? Well, adoption is something uh, very, very important in the light of constellations. The founder of Family Constellation, um, is Bert Hellinger and he recently uh, 
passed away, but he worked through many, many years of his life to understand family constellations and adoption was one of his most talked after at the same time controversial topic. Because, well, as you said, nature versus nurture, and we must give space, life, and source of energy to children who are left behind, who could not, whose parents could not be there for them, or let's say couldn't even survive. In that case, um, Hellinger said, and I follow what he said in my constellations, is the adopted child is always internally and energetically connected to the biological parents. We cannot remove them from their soul, from their bodies. So when children are adopted and the adoptive parents do not honor the parents of the child, and by not honoring, I'm not saying aggressive dishonor. It could be something as simple as, oh, it's nice that this child is finally with us. At least he has a good life. With his parents, he wouldn't have had a good life. Even that thought considers or puts us greater than the parents, right? Then the child is going to feel it at some point. And therefore, we do see a lot of issues between the child as well as the adoptive parents. Some problems are primary and they are inevitable, like loss of identity, not knowing who you are, not having a sense of belonging. Even if I have a set of parents, I am still going to feel as if I don't belong here, as if they don't love me enough. In that case, in the constellation, when we constellate or put the child as well as the adoptive parents, we bring in the biological parents and we allow the child to move towards the biological parents, accept them and embrace them. And we also allow the adoptive parents to offer a sense of gratitude to the original biological parents that, well, you did place the child in good hands, even unknowingly. Even if we discover the child after you died or after you left, it is good for us now and we thank you for allowing us to take care of this child. So a sense of honor towards the parents is established, not only by the child, but also by the uh, adoptive parents. Uh, but what if, uh, what if you do not know who the parents are? Even then. So there are many cases where uh, a child was brought from a different country. The child um, is born maybe post-war, uh, post-riot, post-massacre. And the parents are not known. And the adoptive parents have tried their level best to hide the fact that the child was brought from this country, which was ravaged by war or massacre. The child is still going to show symptoms of that. It might end up having panic attacks. It might complain all the time about... Um, going through anxiety, going through panic, feeling as if it's not its space, waking up with nightmares, not being able to connect to the parents, even later in life. So then the child has to be allowed to embrace that country, embrace that race, embrace that culture, and also embrace the parents who the child does not know. And even the adoptive parent does not know, but we know the country at least. We know the race at least, we know the tribe, we know the culture at least, right? So the roots have to be embraced, even if the specificity of those roots are not in conscious awareness. Uh, I know that most uh, adoptive parents do tend to tell their, their kids when they are adopted, but there yeah. are a whole lot of people who do not tell the kid at all. So do you think it would, it would affect the, the kid? I'm saying child, but I think the effects are seen mostly later on in life. In adults, when they start yeah. developing their own, yeah. own ideas of yeah. why these issues are happening to them, right? So yeah. what happens yeah. in those cases? Uh, would you, what would, I know this is 
quite a huge question i if it's not purview of this yeah. but uh yeah yeah it's it's a huge dynamics what i can offer you here is only a glimpse into the dynamics so there are two things here what is the intention of the adoptive parent in hiding this truth is my intention um born out of the fact that if i tell the child then the child might go hunting for the parents if i tell the child uh, then will they disacknowledge us discount us and leave us is the child going to be in grave danger so the intention matters however at the heart of intention there is always a tendency to keep things secret and that's not going to work out because anything that is kept secret is going to come into the light through the body through other traumas through relationship issues through financial issues through belongingness or sense of you know loss of identity something is going to happen the second thing is when they do not tell the child at all you are depriving the child of something that rightfully belongs to the child so that deprivation is going to catch up because at the heart of this issue is a fundamental right is a biological right and there is a soul right of the child to belong to those parents even if those parents are not known so that is going to catch up thank you that was well explained now gorav are there other variants of this modality uh, family constellation are there some other variants also and do they all work yeah um there are many many variants to this uh, modality and people who know me and people who know my work usually ask me that how can we do a constellation without the presence of uh, people without the presence of a group because it started off as a group exercise as a group form of therapy why is the group required the group is required because we need representatives to represent different parts of the system we need someone to represent the mother someone to represent the father someone as grandfather so that is why we need a group now what do we do in the absence of a group let us say in these times when we are working through zoom how do we do a family constellation so we do family constellations through different figurants so we can use different figurants and these figurants could be anything um we work in the realm of healing and we know that crystals play such a huge role in our work right so different crystals of different weights uh, of different sizes can be representative um i use a lot of incense sticks in my um representations uh many people many international uh, experts also use um paper paper like this something like this you see so i have a random number written here and there is an arrow and i will tell you what the arrow means but people use arrows then i use these uh incense sticks uh some people also use um you know these simple crystals the idea is to simply create an arrangement and we will look at how the arrangement speaks to you for example when we meditate we ask people to visualize that visualize your throat or visualize your root chakra or visualize let's say a nice garden in front of you when you're walking in the garden and then you come across this spiritual being what are we exactly doing we are bringing an arrangement of things into light right constellation is simply a three dimensional arrangement of a system that you want to explore or an ailment or a problem that you want to explore and one can use literally anything to represent it i had uh, a therapist uh, someone who was very prolific in their work used different slippers to step into different different roles different colored slippers and i had someone who used different colored pillows to sit and feel what the pillow is telling them so what i want to say that you can get as creative as possible with the process 
However, there are some basic tenets and these basic principles. We call it orders. Orders of the process which must be followed irrespective of the technique that one uses. You're saying that we can either use actual people hmm. and in case of absence of people, we can use anything else. Yes. To use them for representation. And is a permanent resolution possible of any issue that you may have? Yes. A lot of people ask me this question and I think it's a very relevant question. That is permanent resolution possible. Now, first of all, we have to understand what, what do we mean by permanent resolution? Does permanent resolution mean disappearance of symptoms, disappearance of the whole ailment and uh, it never appearing? Or does, does permanent resolution mean that, um, well, to some level symptoms exist? but we are able to manage them. In constellations, I've seen that both are possible. And the effect is so long lasting, as well as slow, that I tell people that you have to give 90 days for it to show some effect. Meanwhile, you can continue to work on other constellations that you want to work on, other parts of your problem, other systems. But this one that we worked on, you must give it time. And people write to me. People write to me after three months, six months, even a year, and tell me that it's not there, it's gone. Some people say that uh, some part of it is there. For example, the pain is there, but it doesn't affect me the way it affected me earlier. Or let's say some people will say that I have moved on from this relationship, but now I choose to be, for example, single and even though i wanted a different lover or a different partner i no longer want it so their priorities may also change i'm not saying that it will turn out to be in an ideal form that they would have wanted it to be like their priorities and their outlook may also change but yes there is permanent resolution in that way in the format that i have described that i see in each and every constellation so, Garu, for, your, um, for our viewers, would it be possible for you to do a small demonstration? I know family constellation normally takes a lot of time. Yes, but yes. is there a small glimpse that you can give so that they understand what exactly you do? Yeah, yeah. So I, there are various models. Uh, so first I said that there are various processes of doing a constellation, right? Now, uh, in this one, there are various, to answer this question, there are various models. And I will tell you one of the model that um, we use. So give me an example. Um, give me an example of a problem. And, uh, and I, will, I will show the model that how, how do we begin the model. You've been speaking frequently of bloating and migraines. Do you think we should take uh, one of those as a, because that is something which is very common. A lot of people come with bloating in the stomach or a migraine. Right, right, right. Okay, we can, we can show that. So now let's imagine that a person comes with um, bloating and migraine, okay? I'm not going to treat the bloating and the migraine differently. I will consider this as a set of symptoms, okay? Now for me, there are two elements involved here, the client and the set of symptoms, right? So let us say if you are my client, I will ask you that, Sheila, now tell me if two colors represented you and your set of symptoms, what color would they be? And then I would give you options to choose that. So for that purpose, let allow me to turn my screen, okay? Allow me to turn my screen and I will simply show you a glimpse of how I go ahead usually. So let us say that you choose yellow and you choose purple, okay? Then going by this thought that uh, this is the issue, I will ask you, Sheila, can you tell me this, if this is you and if this happens to be your symptoms, in this entire field, in this entire table, where would you like to place them? And I want your answer here. I want your real answer here. 
Okay. Assuming that the purple is my symptom. The purple is, yes, the purple could be your set of symptoms yeah. and the yellow could be you. Yeah. Or if you wanted, we can do it vice versa also. Okay. But because you've said the purple is your symptoms and this is you, yeah. let us place them. And I will ask you that where would you want me to place it? Considering that this is your symptoms. Let's say in front of the yellow, close to it. In front of the yellow and yeah. close to it. Yes. Okay. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to ask you that if this purple had the ability to look in a certain direction, let us say it can look towards where my finger is pointing. It can look towards the curtain. It can look towards the screen or it can look towards me. Which direction would you say is it looking at? It could even be looking at the yellow. Yeah, it's looking at the yellow, let's say. Okay, let's say it's looking at the yellow. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring a random number mm -hmm. and an arrow that is above the number. The meaning of the arrow here is that this set of symptoms is looking in this direction. That's what the meaning of the arrow is. Now I'm going to ask you that if symptoms are looking at you, where are you looking at? Let's say the curtain. Let's say the curtain. Okay, now let me bring another random number here. Yeah. Okay. And let's say the arrow is pointing towards the curtain. So my first question in this case is, dear client, this is the first inner picture that while you stand, behind you stands your ailment. Okay. And then I will ask the client that if you happen to place yourself in the position of this ailment, how do you feel about this person who is standing in front of you? Meaning I will ask Sheila only that Sheila, if you give up your identity and if you stand in the position of your own ailment, own illness, as you look at Sheila from behind, how do you feel about it? What do you want to tell her? So give me a sentence that comes to your head. You mean to say I become my ailment? Yes. Okay. And then you look at yourself as you look at Sheila and she looks towards the curtain while you look at her. What would you like to tell her? Pay attention to me. Let's... Ah, pay attention to me. Right. So this is saying pay attention to me. Now, because it's a hypothetical demonstration, what I may do is... Meanwhile, I may also ask you to tell me, okay, now Sheila, if you had to place your parents in this constellation, where would you place them? So yeah, answer the hypothetical question. If this represents your mother and this represents your father, where would you like to place them? Around me. Around me? Yeah. You mean to say here? Yes. And one or do you mean to yeah. say here? Okay, that, that becomes important where you place it, that you ask the client to yeah. have. Yes, yes. Yeah. the placement is very, very important because the placement is going to give us a three-dimensional picture okay. that, we, that we understand that, oh, this is the dynamics that is going on. Okay. So let's imagine that you place them here, okay? Yeah. And let's imagine that they are also looking away from you. Okay. While there could be another reason because of which they are looking at, it is possible. Now I'm going into hypothetics at this moment. It is possible that they both are looking at another child who is ill and who is, for example, disabled or who is even dead. And their attention is on that child because of which they are not able to attend to this child. And this child is looking towards the parents. And the inner voice of the child means that I am also ill, look at me, pay attention to me. And then as we proceed to the process, there will be a resolution picture that will emerge perhaps, wherein when finally 
the child is attended and this child is given a space and this child is also given a space along with the parents and the parents recognize this child and this one who is experiencing the bloating and the symptoms is able to accept the parents love finally because it has been asking for love it is asking for attention then perhaps the illness can recede from the constellation because this system is complete and although this is a hypothetical scenario hypothetical situation uh, we take a lot of time when we do an actual constellations um, sometimes 40 minutes and sometimes even an hour and when i do take the history of the client i do take another 30 minutes to note down the history and then start off with whatever information i have about the client okay okay that was quite fascinating thank you there is um, just one last question that i need to ask you and that is um, you spoke about the child being finally where the parents finally give space to the child or give space to the children hmm. most of the people um, and i meet quite a few who come to me where uh, the biggest issue has been that they've been invisible in their lives hmm. where the parents don't see them there are also a lot of people who come who feel like they don't belong anymore hmm. Hmm. they don't belong with their family they don't belong in the city they don't belong on this planet hmm. is that only because you spoke about earlier also about this feeling of belonging from an adopted child but a lot right. of children of natural parents also feel that hmm. Hmm. a lot of people who yes. grow up. so yes. how does how do you build that into a family constellation so Trust. one of the central tenets and orders of family constellation is that anyone who has been excluded in the family at any point of time is going to show up in another form in a subsequent generation so an uncle who was not honored at one point of time because his choices of life or marriage or property were different if a girl or let's say a grandmother who was not allowed to marry her first partner because the first partner was not uh, prosperous enough or let's say a child who was forgotten uh, after the child died these are examples of exclusion some exclusions are voluntary where we want to exclude those people and that's why we exclude and some uh, exclusions are involuntary as in we don't even know that we are excluding them because to forget a dead child or to forget a miscarried child or to forget an aborted child is a naturality in our culture and society so we think of that as something which occurs so when you go to someone and ask them that how many children do you have they will say oh we have two children they are never going to say we had four children two of them are miscarried and two survived they are never going to say that but at the same time there is an exclusion happening now why i'm explaining this is because anywhere whether it's in the third generation second generation current generation there is an exclusion happening that exclusion is going to manifest in the ones who survive for example if there were five abortions and after that a child is born this child is 32 today this child will feel the effect of the parents for whatever reason not wanting those aborted children this child is also going to feel the exclusion experienced by all the five aborted children so they will have a sense of not belonging until in a constellation all those children are brought into the light and whatever is unconscious is made conscious similarly some children who may not be adopted but they feel a sense of distance from their parents perhaps are not aware of the fact that their mother uh, was never loved by their parents because those parents were maybe occupied with something else a disabled child along with that their father was also not quite there because the father's parents were also not quite there 
it is possible that the father's father died at a very early age and the mother had to take responsibility and therefore she had to be away for long long periods and therefore this man who grows up to be the father of this child also experiences love in that manner and therefore thinks of not being available as a natural phenomenon but coming from both the families this feeling of not being connected not being loved not being given enough so this child is going to experience a sense of disconnection a sense of not belonging a sense of not being loved enough from both the parents because both the parents carry their own own trauma from their own own systems and the child is going to be the culmination of this and so it feels from both the sides and that's why on an everyday basis we find client who go through feelings of loss of their identity not knowing where they are placed not knowing if they are worthy of love not knowing if they can ever find love because these issues are getting more and more common because of the inherited family trauma we go through uh, and we carry for example this pandemic has affected all of us right now right so are the effects of fear terror restriction feeling constricted feeling restricted are are they going to go away no they are not going to go away they are going to remain in our bodies and they are going to remain in our memory field and they are going to be passed down to the next generation so at some point they will all experience feelings of fear terror restriction confinement even it could manifest in the form of a mass let's say body ache mass number of people going through um, fibromyalgia mass number of people going through extreme restriction at their joints and limbs and their bones so you see how i mean that how inherited trauma not only in families but also at the country level or at the world level can affect us so that's why we see people experiencing these kind of issues and um, is there no way to stop it is there any way that a place that we say okay this is how i'm going to stop it from spreading further so the only way to stop it for people who who belong to the subsequent generation is to look back and see what belongs to the previous generation and acknowledge it and know that whatever happened happened at the level of those people who could not survive the fact that their fate belongs to them and they are also included in the system in the family and for generations who are going to allow newer generations to come ahead to come uh, you know to come up uh, it is good for those parents or or those people to tell the children the stories of what happened in a way that these stories can become stories of survival stories of victory stories of how people came together and stories of how people learned a different way of connecting the way we are connecting right now so these can become victorious stories also these can become stories of triumph also it is important to create that uh, light in the in the subsequent generations in the upcoming generations also so then they will not carry the fear and the terror in that unconscious form because it has been brought to life it's conscious now and that is a beautiful message that we can give the viewers as we end the segment now we can continue this conversation i think for hours agar it is so fascinating but since we have this i know you have to get back to work and you have a quite a busy schedule so thank you very much for all the wisdom that you shared and i will be sharing your credentials in the comment box so that uh, people can get in touch with you and resolve all these issues so thank you very much for thank coming you. on the show thank you thank you so much so that was dr gaurav deka and his interesting take on family constellations if you have any questions any comments please post it in the comment box below and keep watching light on